Hello there, and welcome back to another painting session. And in this painting session, we're going to be making a cool looking miniature base for a sort of oriental themed army or model or miniature. So for this one, I'm making this base for my Asami box set from the Malifaux game. So we're going to try and paint a koi carp fish in the water. So this is either going to go very good or very bad. So stick with it and we'll see how we go. This is going to require quite a few different layers, uh, but hopefully by the end of this video we should have a really cool looking uh, fish in water style base. So we're going to try and be as basic and as easy as possible, okay? Um, so we're going to start with a bit of cork sheeting, you can use stones if you want instead, but I've recently found a nice big pile of cork sheeting, so I thought I'd give this a go and see if this works. Um, this one I picked up, this is only a 1mm thick, so I'm putting multiple layers, and as you see I'm just planning the area beforehand, trying to cut down um, uh, the area as much as possible so that I don't end up overhanging over the base too much so using my hobby knife which you don't want to cut your fingers so be careful I'm just gonna map out the area around the base so that I can take the excess bits of cork from the base now I'm planning this by using the model as well so I've got the model primed and separate from the base for this one because this is quite a, a difficult base to do so we're gonna try and um, paint the model separately and then bring it onto the base a little bit later. If it was quite a simple base then I wouldn't mind so much but with this one this is going to be quite specific, quite difficult so we're going to just do them separate and try to do them as well as possible. So I've put the two bits together, there's Asami there and she should just about stand on the base this way. So that's the plan, see we're going to have the water just in front uh, maybe one or two little plants which we'll show you in a sec. So talking about plants I found a small set of plastic plants. Now these look pretty cheap and cheerful and they are pretty cheap and cheerful. I think a pack of about five of these cost me about 80 pence uh, which is next to nothing you know that's, that's, that's relatively cheap. And pretty much that's all you want to do is take one or two of the small ones, break them off and then we're going to glue them sort of in place, you're going to glue them into a gap. Now to stop them looking so cheap we're going to paint over them as well and we're going to build a little bit of character and texture out of them without there really being a lot because they're quite flat as they are. So for this part I'm using super glue. I have some uh, very high end super glue here, very cheap one pound super glue. Um, so we're just going to place our plants into the gap here. This can be a little fiddly. Uh, super glue is not my favourite medium because I normally end up just sticking my fingers together. Um, so take your time, don't worry too much if you get super glue on yourself, just make sure not to get super glue on anything else. So like your desk or anything like that because it can be a nightmare to remove otherwise. I'm just trying to plan out where these are going to go, so something along those lines would be perfect. Now to stop them from uh, feeling too weak or breaking off, we're just going to reinforce that little bit, or rather I'm going to reinforce that a little bit. I'm going to add another nice big blob of super glue because this super glue dries, um, instead of going into a crust, this, this dries into like a paste. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place another little bit of cork just across the top there as you see and that then is going to help to reinforce and hold those plants in place so it's just making them a little bit tougher than what you'd think. So once it's primed, which I've sprayed with a nice grey primer, I'm then just going to go across and paint the darkest tone of the stonework. So for this I'm using a heavy charcoal. Um, you can use like an ashing grey, you can use black if you want, I mean you could prime the model black if you want, it's completely up to you. This is just the way that I work so I just figured I'd show you sort of the step by step so that you can get to the same level if you want to. And ideally you just want to cover all of the stonework in this grey. 
Once the grey is dry, not like me and painting when it's not dry to try to rush through, but once it's dry, then you can paint the water. And I know there's a big debate online about water being blue or not blue or anything like that. I think most of it is just down to personal choice. For this, because I want the fish to stand out a lot on the base and to create sort of like a cartoony effect to the base, I'm going to use a very, very dark blue. So, although I know uh, there's a bit of a debate going about whether water is blue or not, uh, that is not my place to say. Instead, I'm just going to use blue for uh, creative purposes. How's that? That sounds good, doesn't it? So then we're just going to use a military green to paint across the plants. Military green from Vallejo is a very, very dark green. And once all of your paint has dried, you're going to want to just put a wash across it. So for the wash, I'm using the Citadel Null Noil. This is a black wash, so it's just going to tie everything together and darken everything down. For the next step, it is very, very vitally important that you wait for everything to dry, because then we're just going to dry brush. Now, for the dry brush to begin with, I'm using a stonewall grey. So this is a middle grey, a medium grey. Um, and that's just the first dry brush, and I'm just putting that across the stone area and across the stone parts here. So just where the, uh, the cork is, that's going to look like stones and rocks and anything like that or asphalt or tarmac or you know roads and things along those lines so just dry brush in that once that's done you could do an, an, a further highlighted dry brush then of sky gray which is a lighter gray so we're going from a medium gray to a light gray um, and that's creating the, the dark gray at the bottom the medium the highlight and the shade going into the recess points as well creating that level of depth look see that's lovely So once we're at that stage, we're going to try and fix up these plants. We're going to try to make them not look so cheap. And ideally, what we're going to do is we're just going to go back and we're just going to paint this uh, up the plant. And what we're going to try and do is just leave a gap in the middle. So you just want to leave like a really sort of like hairline gap just up the middle. So that creates the element or creates the illusion of there being a stalk there. Now, because I based the miniature in a military green, for this one I'm going to use a goblin green, so this is just a slightly uh, higher tone or a highlighted version of the green, so we're just lightening that tone. And again, just try to leave that little line in the middle. It's not uh, such a big deal if it's not perfect or if it's a little bit whichever, it doesn't matter too much. So. Once you've done that part with the leaves then, you're just gonna paint around the edges of these, creating uh, more depth again. And with this, I'm using the Goblin Green again, but I've just mixed a little bit of white in there, just to make sure that I can get that color a little bit lighter from the green that is on um, the leaves themselves. Again, just creating that depth. So now we've got sort of a dark tone with a middle stem, uh, a, a middle tone then with the green, and then a highlight around the edges and creating a bit more to those plants. So already they're looking much, much cooler and much nicer than the cheap and cheerful plants that we saw at the beginning with the bright, bright, luminous green plastic. See, so we're just building and creating that element of, um, uh, of texture and realism to it, even though they are pretty flat plants. There you go. And I mean, you could take your time and you could paint them any colour you like and things like that. So for the most difficult part, which is going to be our little koi, this is going to be our little fish, what you want to try and do is use a very, very small brush, use a very, very thin brush. And ideally, to begin with, what we're going to try to do is paint a tear, uh, a teardrop shape. So we're just going to paint this teardrop as a shape where the fish is almost curling around the base. Now I've painted this particular one curling away from the base rather than curling into the base. Um, completely up to you. If you wanted to follow the groove of the base so that you can paint the fish following round into the base, that's your choice entirely. Uh, like I say, I've just painted it this way just because I thought it'd be a little bit more creative, almost as if the fish is going back out into the pond from the shallower areas. And once you've got the tear shape, then we're just going to map out and mark out kind of just a few little sort of rounded areas where the fins would be. And once you've got the area where the fins would be, just bring that round in lines. As you see, I'm just trying to drag the the, the brush into lines so that it creates that illusion of um, 
the fins then, so the, the texture in the fins, you see? So we're not painting just one flat colour, we're trying to paint very, very thin, um, fin-like lines so that it gives an element more of depth rather than just one flat colour. If you paint it one flat colour, you'll lose the idea and the shape of the fact that it's a fish. So for the middle part then, because the middle part is going to be thicker and things like that, just going back and re-highlighting the middle part and trying to create um, more emphasis on the fact that they are fins, as you see there. So that should be the base layer. Now the base layer I'm only using the, uh, the, the, the ghost grey at the moment which is an off white so it's not white, it's not grey, it's a very light uh, light grey um, and I'm just using that one for the time being and what I'm doing which I do not recommend is putting some clear PVA glue in straight from the bottle so I made the mistake of putting the first layer in straight from the bottle and then the other layers later on I used the brush to paint it in. Use the brush don't pour it into the, the base, it is so much more, you, you have so much more control when you use the brush. So first things first, use your basin brush. So as you can see this brush is ruined, this is one of my basin brushes, so it doesn't matter if I wreck this brush because it's already used for this sort of thing. And just gently pull that, uh, that PVA into place. Try not to touch the underneath too much, just try to manipulate the, uh, the paint. What you'll find is I tend to dab the paint down so that I've got no um, chance of just dragging any of the paint off the base then. And once that's dry, we're going to paint back on top of that PVA then. So the PVA will will dry completely see-through. That's the point of clear uh, PVA. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to add three little patches here of a dwarf skin, which is a very, very pastely light sort of orange colour. And this is going to be the base idea or the base colour towards what our fish is going to look like. Because we're going to, push, uh, we're going to paint more... Uh, orange and a lighter orange further up. Now once the orange is there we're going to go back and add another layer of ghost grey and for this now we're just going to try to catch more of where we think those uh, fins are going to be but also we're just going to try to stick around the top half of the fish. Okay so we're not painting the whole fish again we're just painting the top half of the fish because the top half is going to be more in light whereas the bottom half is going to be more in the shade. So that's the idea, is to try to create that depth we just build in up on one side. As you see, my paint is nice and thin, so it doesn't matter if I make a mistake because it's easy to manipulate. Just add a little bit of water, and then I can take that paint back out. Okay, so once that layer is dry, then we're going to add another layer of the clear PVA glue. Now hopefully this will add a little bit more depth or 3D depth to the painting on the fish. Hopefully. Hopefully. And we'll see when it gets to the end. So, like I say, just dab that paint in. Be careful not to drag it around too much. And then once that layer is dry, then we're going to go back in and we're going to add a lighter shade now. So we're gonna use an orange fire from Vallejo. And it's just a lighter orange, and this now we're just gonna to stay towards the top half of the fish. So no, we're not gonna paint the whole orange, just the top half of the fish. So again, as I was saying, the top half is gonna be in light, the bottom half is gonna be a little bit, um, a little bit darker, or rather a little bit of a different shade, so that then ideally, the color is more where the light is hitting the fish from a certain side. And once that layer of the orange is done, then we're going to go to a white colour. So this isn't an off-white or a grey anymore, we are now going to paint white. So this is the, 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 the brighter colour. And again, we're going to pay a little bit more attention to these fins so that we've got, we've got then almost like that um, three-dimensional um, layer in between. So the grey underneath will create a little bit more shadow and depth to that miniature to that 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 little effect that we're gonna have so again just sticking to the one side now we're painting a highlight just down the one side here so hopefully that's where the light is gonna catch this little fish and this is where hopefully the the, the, the depth and the three-dimensional sort of side of it is gonna come take your time with this type of painting it's very small it's very difficult but just slow slow build up those brush strokes patience is key 
Um, don't try to put too much on your brush, too much onto the base. Use as little as possible. Do two, three, four layers if you need to. Build it up slow and slow and slow and slow. And it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Because when you get to the end, it'll look really, really cool. So there we go. Once that layer is dry, I'm just going to add a small spot of black on either side. Just going to give this little fish two little beady eyes. Um, and again, this is very, very small. So like I was saying earlier about using your brush and just gently, a couple of taps, couple of taps, couple of taps. You don't want the paint to just come straight off your brush because then you can make mistakes. So because we're painting on such a small scale, we're just taking our time, taking our time very, 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 very gently. And once the eyes are dry, we're gonna go back with another layer of glue. So the clear glue just on top again. As you see, I'm dabbing this now, like I said, not to damage or affect any of the uh, uh, paint that we've done. Uh, we're just gonna go up onto the rock as well, create a little bit more of a, sort of a wet effect on the rock. And um, once more, we're just gonna go back on this layer now and do once more again, add more of that bright orange. So we're going for that orange fire again, just around the very, very, very edges of the orange this way. And we're just catching those very, very tips just around the top edge where that light hopefully is going to catch and, and make this miniature look quite deep and like I say, almost in a three dimensional way. I know it's not a three-dimensional fish, but with those layers, hopefully it will create some sort of um, illusion then. Hopefully. So there we go, just trying to catch where the uh, light may be shining, just off the very ridge to the top part of the fish there. Now I'm going to do the same again with the white, so just to tidy things up a little bit, and just catch a little bit more of the light, like I was saying. I painted like a little mouth, kind of like whiskers, I suppose, on the side there as well. There we go, just straight down the side, like where the uh, where the light should be. It's easy to forget just how small this painting is, based on the fact that the camera uh, is zoomed in so far. But I mean, you can see just how how small it is by how. Uh, big sort of the, the tips of my fingers look. So once we've done that part, we're just gonna go around and put the black all the way around the base. So we're just gonna finish our base off, make our base look really nice and and, uh, and complete. Um, and the reason for this is because we're gonna put another thick layer of the PVA inside. So we just wanna get the base done and looking complete first before we put that PVA on top um, because hopefully it should tie it together then and all look uniformed and Perfect. I keep saying hopefully a lot. This is the first time I've ever painted anything like this. So a lot of this is trial and error. A lot of this has been pretty much just using things as um, just as a test, really, and just to see what what we can do and what 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 is possible in sort of the hobby. And um, and like I said, because of the models that I've got to go on this, this should be a really really unique base that, that makes the miniature really unique and stand out you know when this takes to the field I want my opponents to be saying wow you painted a fish on your base and things like that so that's our little fish all done there's our little koi all painted should have a cool look to it a little bit of three dimension to it it's about four or five layers of PVA in between the paint so that should be quite cool and as you can see the PVA shines as well a little bit like water once it's dry so hopefully that effect that effect should stand out and make it look amazing let me just pop my Asami on the base to see how it would almost look. I mean, she's not painted, that's going to be for another video. But yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. That's not bad for a first attempt, right? So let me know in the comments if you think this is cool and if it helped you and if it's inspired you to try something different. And as always, thank you very, very much for watching.